guys, this is Jenny Lyles. Welcome to Out of My Mind. Last time I made a video, I made it about how to create scripts for yourself to guide yourself when you're dealing with physical boundary crossings. Today, I want to talk a little about what to do when people attempt to cross your material boundaries. And this material boundary is when people are trying to talk you into investing time, money, influence, or power into their needs. And of course, sometimes we're going to want to do this and sometimes we're not. Material boundaries often take a great deal out of us and cause us to not take care of ourselves as well. So this is a piece of material boundaries. Now I talked last time about four different levels of boundary settings from softest to firmness with calling authorities being beyond firm, firmest. The softest is usually avoidance where you are nonverbal or you attempt to avoid the situation or the person that you're dealing with. The second level is to ask, generally in a conversational tone, generally using please and thank you and excuse me and other ways to let people know that you're being polite. To tell, you tend to use your dog trainer voice where you are attempting to let somebody know that you mean what you say and you plan to back it up if you have to, but you really don't have want to have to. And finally, you demand, and the demand should be saved for only when asking and telling have not worked and this person is beginning to feel threatening to you and at this point you demand that your rights and your space be respected. Now I'm going to start with one little thing about the softest level of material crossings is that you have a unique tool that you can use with material crossings that is often not able to be used in other situations. And that is, you can say, I can't do the thing because so-and-so won't let me. And I am a therapist and I have been so-and-so more times than I can count. I can't do that because my therapist thinks it's a bad idea, right? So somebody has asked you to loan them money, has asked you to spend time with them when you really don't have the time has asked you to use your influence to get them a job or use your power to get them out of a ticket or something like that, and you don't want to do that thing. You can say, I'm sorry, but company policy won't let me do that, or I'm terribly sorry, but I can't do that because my wife controls our checkbook, or I'm really, really sorry, but I can't do that because I don't want to be responsible for breaking the law. For instance, those are just various ways to do the softest level in a way that puts that person's ire on somebody else who is accepting that role. And that's important. I am perfectly glad to accept the, I'm sorry, my therapist says you can't do that role with a lot of my clients, especially when they're first learning to, to uh, set boundaries. But make sure the person that you're saying won't let you do it, is aware that you're saying that and is okay with it. Now, other softest ways to deal with material boundary crossings are to walk away, shake your head. We're talking about public times here now, okay? So we've got somebody trying to panhandle you or somebody's trying to get you to sign a petition or somebody wants to get you to give them a ride and you've never met this person before, so they're basically hitchhiking, right? And you can just walk away or drive away. You can shake your head. You can avoid eye contact. You can pretend you don't hear. These are all legit. Um, always keep your safety in mind, but also these are kind of on the rude side and these aren't the best. So when you can, let's go to the ask level. At the ask level, you might say, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to donate. I used to do that when I was uh, working with homeless people. I would deliberately not keep cash in my pocket because I'm a soft touch 
and if I had cash in my pocket, I would give it away, and did on more than one occasion. So I stopped carrying cash for about eight years at one point in my life because I'm such a soft touch and it was much easier to say, I'm so sorry, I can't donate today because I don't have the money than to not pay my electric bill because I gave another one of my clients money I shouldn't have given them. Um, somebody trying to get you to sign a petition. I'm so sorry, I can't sign that petition. I don't have the time. Um, or somebody wants to give you to give them a rhyme. I'm sorry, I don't do that for, for people I don't know. You know, things like that. I'm sorry, I don't do that for people I don't know is a pretty much all-inclusive ask at the public level of setting your boundaries. So that's a good one to keep in mind when you're struggling to come up with. I'm sorry, I don't do things like that for people I don't know. When you get to firm, um, maybe somebody's gotten a little aggressive with their panhandling. Maybe somebody, the petition signer is really getting on your nerves or the bell ringer. Um, or somebody's like following you through a parking lot or whatever. And you're starting to feel uncomfortable but not unsafe at this point. You might say, I can't right now. Or I'm not going to donate. Or I don't do favors like that. Those are pretty simple. You noticed I was using my dog trainer voice there, right? And I felt pretty safe doing that because I was in public, because there were people around, and because that level of changing my tone of voice to sound like an authority probably got people looking in our direction, and that person may very well back off at that point. If they didn't, or if you're starting to feel more than a little threatened, you might want to go to the firmest level, and the firmest level is going to be, no, not interested. And you notice I didn't just, um, I didn't just get firmer with my voice. I got louder, too. Above this level, of course, of course you can always contact authorities. You can always call the police. As a reminder, though, police do not always make situations better or safer. And even if it's safe for you, it may not be safe for that person who really may just have a need that they can't meet and is struggling to meet it and is trying to use you to do so. So be careful and cautious when calling the police that you know that there are no other safe options for you to use. Now, the next category of places you may have to deal with people who are trying to cross your material boundaries, and frankly, this is a lot more common is in work and school and other environments where you might have a role and people might be above you and below you and everybody knows each other pretty well but isn't necessarily friends. Um, something like, you know, if you're part of a softball team, if you're whatever it is, you know. So the softest is going to be something along the lines of passing along the donation bucket without putting any money in it, right? You don't have the money, don't put it in it. Just not showing up to those after work informal gatherings that everybody seems to need to show up to. And you choose not to do that every now and then. You can choose to not reply to emails or phone calls. Now that can get you in trouble in a work situation. It can get you in trouble in a school situation. So you always want to be a little cautious with that. And you may want to follow up later, but that may be a good temporary solution for a moment while you gather your thoughts. So you're going to want to be careful, again, in these work and school environments that you don't upset the apple cart and get yourself knocked out of this particular environment because you broke some work or school taboo that um, you weren't aware of. Know your school rules, know your work rules, know the unwritten rules in both of those places so that you can safely break them or follow them as need be, okay? Now, the soft way, the ask way of not donating time, money, uh, not volunteering for a project, whatever, is going to look like, I'm sorry, I've got a bill to pay. I can't donate this time. Or, date tonight, catch you next time. 
or I'm so sorry I can't give you a reference and you may not want to explain that because the explanation is probably going to hurt if they push you go ahead because the explanation is probably going to be because I wouldn't hire you again in a million years right so when somebody asks you for a reference if you wouldn't hire them don't give it to them but you're going to have to tell them that right or please don't ask me to cheat for you I can't do that or I'm sorry, sir, I can't take on that project because I'm already overloaded with this one. If you want me to take off on that project, you're going to have to tell me which of these projects I can drop, right? Now, your firm is going to be not this time or not going to make the gathering or I can't give you a reference or I don't cheat. If you offer a reason, give a reason, tell the truth. Don't, uh, don't gaslight people. Um, gaslighting is one of my pet peeves, as you may have guessed from some of my posts on gas gaslighting. So make sure you're telling the truth to people that you're setting boundaries with, because lying in order to set a boundary just creates more problems than it solves. All right. In social and family situations, you are going to have a complicating network of relationships that can make setting boundaries much harder because when you set that boundary it ripples through your friendship or family group and can end relationships including ones you did not intend to or want to end so always keep that in mind whenever you're setting boundaries and social and friendship groups and decide what you're willing to lose in order to set a boundary that's important to you. And that is an absolutely valid thing to debate with yourself. And both choices are just fine. If you're trying to distance yourself from one people, you may find yourself having problems with somebody else in this situation, but ask yourself if it's worth it. So let's start with the softest. You may ignore the family group text asking for money for some big project that somebody in your family is always trying to get up, and you probably know who that person is. You may avoid people who are always borrowing things from you, including money. Um, you can pretend you don't hear. You can shake your head. You can do things that make it clear that you're always too busy, too broke, um, not helpful in that particular way. In, in nonverbal ways, you can be that person that they can't go to because you've already donated your share and then some. Now, social and family relationships are, of course, reciprocal relationships. That means you are expected to give as well as receive. My question to you when you're deciding that you're not going to give, are you not giving because you don't like this person and don't want this relationship? Or are you not giving because you're not getting your fair share back and you feel like you're being used? Because those are different situations and you may want to think about them differently. So your ask level of setting social and family boundaries might be something like, sorry guys, can't pitch in for pizza tonight, saving for a new computer, but then you don't eat the pizza either because then you're a mooch, right? Or, sorry, Mom, I can't loan you any more money. I have a bill to pay. Or, hmm, hey, sis, I am so sorry, but I can't babysit. I made other plans, right? Now, family and friends are notorious for jumping over boundaries. So quite often, you are going to have to leap up to the next level, which is the tell level. And you're going to have to get firm with people. And so let's say you've got a group of friends and you always seem to be the one opening the wallet. And somebody calls you and they want to go out and it's going to be a fairly expensive night if you're the one paying. So you say, I can't pitch in until everyone starts pitching in. I've already loaned you money. When you pay that back, we can talk. Or you're going to need to find a regular sitter. I can't continue to do this for you for free. Or perhaps... I'm not going to lie for you to your boss. You'll have to tell him why you missed work. At this level where people are crossing boundaries frequently in family and friends situations, you're often looking at problems like mental health issues and addiction issues, which of course are also mental health issues. And at this level, it's going to be 
a level where sometimes you're not going to be able to help that person. And so you're going to have to set those boundaries to help yourself. So keep that in mind as well. So when we get to that firmest level, as I said, that firmest level is always going to be something that that person has been causing a problem for a very long time and you have let that boundary get to the point where you have got to get very, very firm. You may say something like, I'm not going to contribute to supporting your addiction. I need to take a break from this friendship or end it if you keep asking me for doing for things and not doing things for me. Or this is the last chance this friendship or this relationship can't continue and then you're going to have to follow through you are going to have to block this person on every bit of social media you have and you are going to have to tell them that the relationship is over because you aren't going to do this thing any longer finally we're going to come to intimate partnerships as before internet partnerships can be re sexual, re romantic, or both. And you are going to want to explain to your intimate partner early and often what your boundaries are. However, if you've gotten past that point and your relationship is having serious boundary issues as a result, you can fix it or you can get out. Um, sometimes those are your only options. So always keep that in mind. And again, the stakes are higher because uh, a lot of your interactions take place behind co closed doors. Um, sometimes the re consequences are higher, often they're lower because often your romantic partner is not as closely intertwined with your family and friends as other people in your social circle are. Weigh these factor. A materials boundary factor, somebody always asking you to loan them stuff, give them stuff, give them time, do favors for them very early in a relationship, in an intimate relationship, that's a red flag, folks. That may be a relationship that needs to be a fun on Saturday night relationship and a not there's a future in this relationship. So keep that in mind. Now your softest way of dealing with this, again, is always going to be avoid, And again, you're always going to want to keep safety in mind because in intimate partner relationships, violence is a part that often occurs over time. So we want to put a stop to that being a problem. So the softest might be to hide your wallet or hide your bank account. You might arrange to be busy when they ask you to do something for them and pretend you didn't get the phone call. Again, that's pretty passive aggressive. It's not always the best solution, but it may be the safest in some cases, so you're gonna to have to weigh that. It's not a healthy situation, but it may be a protective one. When they ask you for a favor, pretend you didn't hear or pretend you forgot. Um, promising people to, that you'll do something and then not doing it, that's pretty cold. I'd avoid that if you possibly can. If it's a safety issue and that's your only out, go ahead, but I would really discourage you from doing that. Now your soft is going to be your ask, and so you're going to be very soft with how you think, sorry honey, I'm all tapped out, or well, we have a thousand and one things to do this week, remember? I'm sorry, I just don't have time. Or honey, you know I can't ask my boss that, it might get me in trouble. Or, and this one happens a lot to those of us who are crafters. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I can't knit that for you. I already have three projects I'm committed to this year. And if anybody of you is a crafter, knitting projects are a serious time commitment. So you really have to weigh whether you actually have the time to do that thing or not. Now, if this person is chronically crossing your boundaries, and it's been going on for a while, you're going to have to get firmer. And that's where it's going to get scarier because if you have any history of this person being violent, you may want to find other ways to deal with this, like finding a way out of the relationship while keeping your safety in mind, using your local domestic violence hotline, shelter, things like that. But if you think you can salvage the relationship, if you think you are safe, go ahead and get to firm level. Um, you're going to say something like, I've paid my portion of the bills. You have to figure it out. Or, we'll have to do without. 
if somebody is chronically overspending money or you're going to have to do that for yourself or find somebody else I don't have time now this is a good way to deal with when your partner isn't contributing to keeping up the house and you're a very busy person and you don't have time to do it either and you've been doing over 50% and you've just decided you're going to do your 50% and you're going to stop that person may have to pay somebody to do their 50% of the cleaning and they're just going to have to figure that out now the firmest is usually going to be a relationship ender or a relationship changer it's either going to get much better or must worse and I wanted you to hear that because always actions have consequences so let's say that you are just done with your partner in a lot of ways you might say something like I've asked you to pull your own weight for a while now I'm moving out I've asked you repeatedly to stop asking for that favor. Stop asking or we're through. And these kinds of things, again, we are looking at situations where we're probably going to lose a relationship now and then when we set these boundaries. But what we are going to gain is we are going to gain some freedom of our time. We are going to gain some self-esteem. We are going to gain some control over our lives. We are probably going to gain better relationships after we let this relationship go. Or this relationship occasionally can even morph into a better relationship. That does happen. So this is the talk about material boundaries in the four categories of your life where these boundaries are likely to be tested. Go through these, just pick a few scripts that work for you, practice them, try them out on the people you need to try them out on, and try to have better conversations about boundaries going forward so you don't have to ever get to the firmest level with people. Cut the people out of your life that you need to cut out and invite new people in that are better at respecting your boundaries. This is all I have today. The next one that I do on this boundary series will be on emotional and mental boundaries, but that'll be a little while yet because I think I'm going to go to a different topic for my next video. Um, I haven't decided what it is, but I am tired of boundaries at this point. And I appreciate you watching all the way through to the end. Thank you so much for this. I would very much like you to subscribe to my channel like this video, comment, and share it with people that you think might benefit from it because my goal is to put myself out of business by making as, mentally healthy as many mentally healthy people in the world as I can. You can go to patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S or to oomm.live to see more of my stuff and at my Patreon you will see that at the upper levels of my membership tiers you will find some additional services such as participating in groups and even in individual one-on-one -on -one life coaching sessions and you will also find levels where you can participate in discussion groups of these particular topics that are delving a little deeper. Those will begin on July 1st, 2019, and if the room is empty, we'll just have to fill it later, okay? Thank you very much for your time. I will see you later, and I appreciate everything you do. Bye-bye.